Claire Winslow here showing you one approach to abstract printmaking using the gel plate or gelatin plate and some golden open paints which are my favorite medium to use with the gel plate. Uh, there are different kinds of inks you can use but I do like the particular characteristics of the golden open. So in this video I'm going to show you these sort of um, vaguely sea themed uh, monotypes and I've sped the video up a little bit um, but the main thing is I'm using different papers for example this one is um, a Japanese kitakata paper it's a strong but thin printmaking paper I'm sort of learning as I go making really rough um, indicators of uh, where to place the paper so um, I'm not being very scientific about it, but I'm making a few marks on my uh, table underneath so that I know where to place the paper. Because the main thing about this video is I'm going to be showing you um, printing a lot of layers onto a single piece of paper, which works really well with the golden opens because they're kind of thin and translucent, at least the colors I'm choosing. So this is the first layer, and I need to let that dry a little bit. I'm kind of got a spot on there and then after it dries you know I'll flip you'll see me flip back and forth between different prints because I will start doing one print I will put it aside and then I'll pick up another piece of paper and I'll start a second print and then I'll work on that and I'll put that aside and then I'll go back to the first one so here I'm using a lot of this sort of um, manganese blue with a kind of a gold combination because I use these colors a lot in my work, in my larger painting too. And uh, I just like them because they evoke, you know, sea and sky or sea and sunset, whatever you choose. You saw me sp uh, spritz, spritz a little bit of um, soapy water on there. And sometimes I'll do that uh, to add texture, although I will admit in this video you'll see me make a couple of errors. I don't think that that was quite the right thing to do with this Kitakata paper because I had forgotten that it's not really, it's an uncoated paper. So the water's going to seep right through. But, you know, I just keep on printing because it will dry eventually and it will give me some texture, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, but it will be a little bit wet for a bit. So that's my second layer, I guess. It's easy to lose track because I tend to print like that lots of prints going on at once. So here's the first one again. I'm bringing it back. I'm using a gold metallic and a quinacridone gold, I think, uh, just to kind of mix up that yellow um, top area. And you'll see me make a variety of marks. Sometimes I'll take away ink and sometimes I'll add it in different ways. So here I took away a little bit of the gold to make marks and then I added the blue with the brayer and we're kind of smoothing it out. I like texture though so I don't mind if it's not a perfectly smooth blue area. And here you can use your q-tip or paper towel or your finger just to remove some ink. Here you're getting into more reductive printmaking here. You know I'm doing my Often I use these um, images of uh, pond-like images, lily pads or what have you. So uh, I'm just interested in making a lot of different kinds of marks and, like I said, continuing to build up layers. And so this print has had a minute or two to dry, and so I can print on it again, and we'll see what we get. So we've covered up some of the those marks with some more blue and we will keep going. So we'll bring back the other print and you'll see what looks like a lot of repetition but it works with these very thin translucent layers. You know you can just keep going, you can adding these subtle textures. Sometimes I'll deliberately leave the this sort of weird brayer marks on the plate and sometimes I'll smooth them out a little bit so that they're not so uh, pronounced. Just making some more marks. These may get covered up partly but 
I'm just trying to be really loose and spontaneous with the mark making. Yep, you can use your paper towel even. Okay, I added a little different kind of blue, more ultramarine this time. I like to mix my blues sometimes. Okay, subtle, but you've got two different blues in there. And you could just keep on going. So now you're going to see me put some paint on the side and kind of blend colors, ultramarine and um, transparent brown iron oxide, just to get a dark, but it's still a translucent dark. And now we're painting on the plate. So you can go back and forth between painting, between removing, between using your brayer. And that's the fun part of this process, especially with the open paints, because they do not dry right away. So you have time to do that. And then I start adding some lights to the top, because I want more contrast. And I'm being super brushy and kind of thick with the white, because I've decided I want this brushy texture in here. And here I've just mixed a little bit of the blue with the white, just to give it a different, a different type of blue in here. So you can just really have fun with this, and uh, we'll see. These those thick marks should work pretty well on top of the thinner layers in the background. Let's see what it looks like here. Yeah. Okay. So some of the white came back up, and some of it stayed on the plate, but that's okay. You can keep on printing. You can switch the size of your brushes also, just to give it some variety. So I'm moving to a thicker, wider brush, it's still kind of a soft uh, brush, just to get some more uh, darks in the bottom, lower part of the print. And a little more of that bluish color too. If I make brushing marks on the top, I kind of want to have some in the bottom too to kind of even things out. I'm just smoothing a bit. That white paint will add some opacity to your colors too now, so it's, it makes sense to add them later in the process, add the white later. more mark making. Back to the other one. I know it's confusing, right? Because they, they're kind of similar. They're very similar. I guess I wanted some little more sort of... Sometimes I'll try to gray things down a bit too if I feel like the color is a little too strong or something. I'll, I'll kind of pull it back or gray it down with a little bit of the blue and brown. But uh, just not thinking too much, just continuing to add more marks. And this paper, although it's thin, it will take quite a few layers. It's meant for printmaking, so um, you can just keep going with it. So here I wanted to print mostly on the bottom, so I just pulled up the top of the paper and didn't print that part because there's still wet paint on the plate. But I like the way it's coming along. I really wanted to get sort of this vignetted uh, aspect of maybe a little darker on the bottom in the corners. That right side's a little heavy, but that's okay. And still more white. So now I think I want it to lighten the top a bit. So sometimes I'll use white just to pull back the colors if I think I, I just want to soften them a bit. I like this paper though, if you can find it. I think I got it at either Jerry's Artorama or 
probably Dick Blick. But so it got a nice um, off-white color. And I um, used to live in Japan and I really like Japanese printmaking. And sometimes they influence me in terms of colors. Okay, more of the brushwork. I'm trying to figure out where I wanted it because you have to remember that everything's reversed. So I think I was trying to get some more dark blue in the right side of the print. So I'm doing it on the left side of the plate. And then we're using some metallic gold, which makes a nice accent. Probably wouldn't use it all over the place, but just as little brush marks, it's going to mix with the other colors and it's kind of cool. Everybody loves metallic, but it's easy to overdo it. I find it works best when you just use it as little accents coming through the other colors. Then it's really nice. Yeah, just a little bit floating above the blue, maybe a little bit up top. It's nice. Okay, we're starting new here. Brand new print. Now that I'm pretty loosened up, I'm not going to worry too much about... Uh, now I'm just going for brush work first, which is not the usual way I work, uh, just to see what this is going to look like. So same colors, just not doing a background, just painting directly to the plate with brush marks. It's kind of fun, very abstract expressionist. So if you like that look, you might enjoy approaching um, gel printing this way. And sometimes I'll soften the edges of the marks with some paper towel, just so it's not all uh, these sharp edges. Mixing in some white there. And I'm switching papers now to more of an Arches heavyweight printmaking paper. It's probably Arches 88, or uh, it could be Reeves, actually, BFK. But it's a printmaking paper. You could also use a watercolor, smooth watercolor paper too. But this is just what I had on hand. And I indicated some marks thinking I'll come back to this. I want to know where to register it, but I didn't register the top right, so there's lots of room on the sides and the bottom, but not on the top. Oh well, that's okay. I'll, I'll trim it out later. So now I'm back to the brayer, deciding that Ah, and I sprayed the plate with some soapy water for texture. Now I'm going to use my brayer to try to get some solid areas back in. Even though they're light, because they're going to mix with that water. This paper also can take quite a few layers. It's meant for a lot of layers of printing ink. Okay, so now you've got sort of a solid color back there a little bit. And we'll keep going with this. Um, when I add white on top like that, it's usually to bring down the, the color um, in the top. And maybe I was just having fun here, I think, uh, to see if I could add more texture and then use the white to kind of cover up some of the sky area. But I'm just not thinking very much about it. Just making a lot of brushy marks. Okay, got to line it up, kind of. This is super loosey-goosey with the lining up, but next time I'll do a video with proper registration. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but I'm holding up the bottom of the paper because I didn't want to change anything in the lower part of the print, just the upper part. Still adding more. You can just keep on going, you know, you just check the print, see what you like, and just keep on printing. I mean, it's really sort of hard to stop. So I decided I didn't want those texture, the little blobby marks everywhere, but maybe in one or two places. Oh, maybe not. I'll smooth, smooth them out. And another layer of blue, okay. Looking good. Soften the sky a bit. I 
Okay, now here I make a decision I'm not so sure about now, but uh, I decided I wanted a little bit of pink or some other color up there, but this uh, liquid quinacridone magenta is really powerful. Wow. So I went ahead thinking, okay, well, it's going to blend with all the other colors. In hindsight, I'm not sure. Maybe I was okay to just leave it the way it was, but that's printmaking for you. <coughs> you just keep going and see what happens. Okay, well, it's stronger, but uh, it's mixing with the orange, so that's kind of cool. But I think I'm now trying to soften that a little bit with some more white. Now I'm just doing a ghost print. I don't know that I'll use that one, but I might use that later. You can always do ghost prints if you want to clean off your plate. And still adding some more white with my brushy texture. If you want to suggest clouds and that kind of thing, you can. You could even be more literal and sort of paint clouds, but that wasn't the idea here. I'm just trying to give it some more dimension up at the top part. Okay, it's kind of good because it gives you something to look at up there. And I think I wanted to soften the sides, the right side and the left side a little bit, and maybe add some bluish white so not everything isn't the same kind of white. 